Meantime, the builders of the troubled Fukushima plant have submitted draft plans to dismantle the reactors over the medium to long term. Toshiba helped build reactors 2 and 3. It's joined with U.S. firms to submit decommissioning plans to TEPCO and the industry ministry. The draft plan says it will take about five years to safely remove nuclear fuel rods from the pools and pressure vessels. It will take a further five years to dismantle the reactors and clear the land while removing radioactive materials that leaked outside the plant. Toshiba says the process may take even longer depending on conditions inside the reactors. Earlier this month, Hitachi gave TEPCO its draft plan for dismantling the number four reactor which it was involved in building. It says the complete dismantling of the reactors will take more than 15 years in view of the lessons learned from past accidents and the fact that four reactors broke down at the same time. TEPCO is taking these proposals into consideration as it studies measures to be taken. Now, the Tokyo Electric Power Company is planning to spray a chemical hardening agent around the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to prevent spreading of radioactive dust in soil. TEPCO says it will begin spraying the polymer emulsion onto debris near the plant's reactor building starting next Tuesday. The operation is part of a plan announced by the firm to stop radiation leakage and bring the plant under control within the next three months. TEPCO has been testing the emulsion since April 1st and says it has hardened debris and that radiation levels in the plant's compound have remained relatively low. We all remember hydrogen explosions in the first few days of the emergency at the plant blew off the roofs and walls of buildings housing the plant's number one and three reactors and showered radioactive rubble and dust over the site. So to prevent this, TEPCO says it hopes to finish spraying the agents around the buildings by the end of May and in the rest of the compound by the end of June. The firm plans to then cover the buildings with huge filter curtains to prevent further spreading of radioactive materials in the environment. Along with concerns from local residents, the containment plan could face numerous obstacles. High levels of radiation have kept workers from approaching the buildings housing the first three reactors, which lost their cooling functions. On Friday, the highest radiation level measured outside the double entry doors of the number one to three reactor buildings was two to four millisieverts per hour. Radiation levels measured between the two sets of doors of those reactor buildings was 270 millisieverts in the number one reactor, 12 in number two, and 10 in number three. At the number one reactor, radiation levels exceeded the national exposure limit of 250 millisieverts for nuclear contract workers. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, has started using a remote-controlled robot inside the reactor buildings. But issues remain, as radioactive water has been found in turbine buildings and the utility tunnel outside the reactors. At the number two reactor, the level of highly contaminated water in the tunnel is still rising. To prevent overflow, TEPCO is stepping up the inspection of the nuclear waste processing facility. The aim is to transfer contaminated water. Underground water at the plant is also contaminated. On Wednesday, the level of radioactive substances sharply increased at the facilities where underground water from the number one and two reactors is collected. On Friday, workers continued monitoring the situation. They say the level of radioactive substances has stabilized or decreased in every reactor from one to six. They also say it's unlikely that highly radioactive water is still seeping into underground water. The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has announced a schedule for getting the crisis under control in six to nine months. But it remains to be seen if things will go as planned. Tokyo Electric Power Company Chairman Tsunehisa Katsumata explained the schedule at a news conference on Sunday. He said the plan has two stages. In the first stage over the next three months, TEPCO aims to cool the number one and three reactors in a stable manner. It plans to cover fuel rods with water by injecting water into the containment vessels. The company also plans to purify contaminated water and return it to the reactors. It will set up heat exchangers to remove heat from the reactors. TEPCO says it will contain the radioactive leakage from the number two reactor by patching the damaged section. Then it will take the same measures at the number one and three reactors. In the second stage, TEPCO plans to lower the temperature of the fuel in the reactors 
to below 100 degrees Celsius to stabilize its condition. Regarding the release of radioactive substances, it will set up water purification facilities to deal with highly contaminated water. TEPCO also plans to put giant covers over the reactor buildings to prevent the release of radioactive substances into the air. Regarding environmental monitoring, TEPCO will first increase the number of monitoring points within the government set evacuation areas. In the second stage, it will carry out decontamination to reduce radiation levels in the area. University of Tokyo graduate school professor Koji Okamoto says officials must approach the work flexibly, be prepared for unexpected situations, and be sure to release plenty of information as they make progress. Local residents have expressed concern about the schedule. My feeling is that six months is a very long time. I really want to go home or at least live near the area where my house is. Residents of Futaba town in Fukushima prefecture were instructed to evacuate their homes. They moved to a shelter in Kazo city, Saitama prefecture. The town's administration also moved there. TEPCO formed a six-month tentative plan, but I don't think that the problems will be solved in six or even nine months. There's no solid foundation for this figure. Concerns are mounting in the fisheries community of Soma City, about 50 kilometers north of the power plant. I haven't gone fishing once since the quake. I want the government to compensate us for the lost earnings. Right now, we have no income at all. Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Kan has posted a thorough review of the government's nuclear energy policy in the wake of the nuclear emergency. Khan was speaking at a Diet Committee meeting on Monday. I long looked positively on nuclear power in light of Japan's strong safety framework. However, I now think that these kinds of assumptions should be put aside as we review the nation's nuclear policy. We also need to thoroughly examine the means by which an accident like the one in Fukushima could have happened. An earthquake and tsunami on March 11th knocked out the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant's cooling system for reactor fuel rods and spent fuel. Khan also said the government should consider a permanent disposal site for spent nuclear fuel, noting that spent fuel at the plant was stored inside the reactor buildings because of the lack of such a site. On Sunday, Tokyo Electric Power Company announced a schedule for stabilizing the plant and curbing the release of radioactive substances within 69 months. Khan told the committee that the government will do all it can to assist. Meanwhile, TEPCO President Masataka Shimizu made an apology at the meeting. We would like to express our profound regret for the incident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. To those living in the vicinity of the plant, the people of Fukushima Prefecture, and the citizens of the entire nation. The U.S. administration wants to continue talks on deepening relations with Japan in parallel with assistance to the country in the wake of the March 11th disaster. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressed the intention through her talks with Japanese leaders. Clinton held separate talks with Prime Minister Naoto Kan and Foreign Minister Takeaki Matsumoto in Tokyo on Sunday. The well-being of the Japanese people is a bedrock priority of the United States. You are our partners and our friends. The U.S. top diplomat promised the country will continue its support for Japan after the devastating quake, tsunami and nuclear power plant accident in Fukushima. Bilateral relations had been soured by issues surrounding the relocation of a U.S. base in Japan. But experts say bilateral ties have been repaired through the U.S. relief operation with nearly 20,000 U.S. troops deployed in Japan since the disaster.